the Lord's good tonight. Well, we love him tonight. We thank God for all he's done for us and for all he's going to do. Amen. Amen. Well, how many know we serve a God this whole time, every time, and it's never late. I shared with the pastor, showed him a little text I got, and I showed him the phone, uh, told him about the phone call I got, and a friend of mine, uh, been working with me now for about two years, and uh, you've heard, and some of you may not, but we've been on radio and TV a number of years, and and uh, you know, it's all about trying to see people saved, isn't that right? Yeah. And to see folks saved by the grace of God. And we've been working very feverishly for the little country church and trying to do all we can to get the gospel out. Well, I got a call. I was down yonder about uh, almost to Durham, almost to Durham. And I got a call from Mr. Smith. This is what he said. He said, Pastor, just got good news for you. I'm going to call you and let you know something. And I said, what's that? He said, uh, are you where you talk? I said, well, is it good or, it, or bad? Because if it's bad, I didn't want to hear it. Somebody say amen. amen. He said, oh, it's real good. I said, how good? He said, September good. I said, well, tell me now. <laughs> he said, it looks like if nothing changes and everything is on schedule. I'm, just, I'm in Raleigh with the FCC. It looks like but you'll have your license to build a Christian television station in September. Amen. He said, I've done something without asking, but I believe you'll forgive me. He said, I've also applied for an FM radio station. He said, but now this is the only problem. I said, what's that? He said, after we get the license, they get it all passed. It looks like it'll happen in September. Now we'll we'll be ready. When they open the window, we'll be good to go. And we think you'll be channel 14 in your area. And he said, it looks like all we'll have to do, we'll file the forms. And you'll have two years to broadcast full power. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So, uh, I don't know how all that works, but all I know is this. I was a little country boy headed to hell. We lived in a little old tent by 50, a little mobile home. You could have thrown a rock or a squirrel through any wall in it. I'm glad to thank God the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords come by where I was one Thursday night. And I was a little seven year old boy and saved me and washed me. And little did I know, bless God, I can serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I, listen, I've been serving him 38 years. And I'll be honest with you, pastors, Christians, ladies and gentlemen, some of you have known me since I was a, uh, you may not believe it, but since I was a very young, uh, black-headed as a crow, teenage boy, driving a Ford Pinto, unmarried, before I ever pastored, it been a long, long time ago. Amen. I'm telling you, and I'm telling you, God has been good to me. Amen. And uh, it's been a struggle. It's been a long journey. Brother Tommy, it's been a good trip. Amen. And the Lord's been good. The first tent I ever owned, uh, Brother Tommy and Brother Ron and Dallas Perry kept me put it up. You remember that? And that's been a long time ago. And Tommy's got to go by. Hickory everywhere he goes, but other than that, he's a good guy. And I'll tell you what, that's been a long time ago. I was 17, the first time I ever owned when we put it up. And I've just been amazed. You know, this week I appreciate Pastor Mark bringing me to camper this week. They stay in. I appreciate that. This week got a man called me, the man in my church called me and said, Pastor, he said, I'm fixing to buy me a motor home. And he's buying a motor home that costs more than most houses. He said, I want you to come by. I want you to come by my house. He said, I've got a camper over there. I want you to get it. I said, what's that mean? He said, I want you to come get it. I want you to come get it. I said, what's that mean? He said, I want you to come and get it. He said, I bought a brand new two years ago. He said, I pulled it twice. And uh, he said, I give up. 
right around thirty thousand dollars for it. They said, "I'll let you use it all summer long." And he meetings you got to preach it in. He said, "My fall of the year, if you want to buy it, I'll let you have it for nine thousand dollars. It's brand new." And I told him, I said, "Well." I'll, I'll come over there and get it. My wife said, what are you going to do? So I'm going to go over there right now before he changes his mind. <laughs> you want to see me over there this morning? I ain't been hooked up a camper in all my life. I look, let's go, I look like a chimpanzee in Manhattan. Amen. I, 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 I mean, but praise God, I, uh, I got it unhooked faster than I got it hooked. I'll just tell you that. And uh, my wife said, don't holler at me. I said, I'm not hollering. I'm just speaking loud. Amen. <laughs> uh, but we finally, we, finally, we, we finally got it. We finally got it hooked up. And uh, I, I told my wife, I said, you know, the devil fought me more about this tent meeting than any meeting I have had in, I believe, 20 years. And this weekend and the last few days, I'm telling you, it seems like God is beginning to open windows. And open. Hey, listen, that's the kind of God we serve. Amen. 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 He never promised us that everything was going to be easy, but He did promise us that He'd be with us every step of the way. Yeah. So sometimes you fight and you fight and you work and you work, and, 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 and it's not that you're doubting God, but we say, Lord, I can't take the morning. And Lord, am I ever going to get a break? And the Lord don't say anything. Have you ever, have you ever wondered why God sometimes don't say nothing? I mean, just say something if it's mm-hmm or no or whatever. It'd be a blessing. And the Lord don't say nothing. And all of a sudden, the Lord says, because you've been faithful. You see a little light. Hey, I'm telling you, can I say this to you tonight? We serve a good God. Yeah. And I don't care who you are. God is faithful. Amen? Amen. And I don't want to miss out on anything the Lord has for me. I want to serve Him with all of my heart. I want to do just exactly. I may die. I may die. Listen to me. I may die a failure. And I refuse to die quit. Somebody say it. Yeah. Yeah. Luke chapter number 15 tonight. I want to read two, three verses. I'm not going to keep you long. And I want you to get something from the Word of God. I want you to be blessed. we got a good crowd tonight. Look at your neighbor and say thank you for coming. Thank you. Anybody that listened to me three or four nights in a row, I, I, I appreciate it. Amen. Amen. I got people out past them. They don't listen to me about three times a year. Amen. And some of you folks done heard me more than some of my own church members. Amen. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful for you coming. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter number 15 tonight. And I want to preach this tonight just a little while on this little thought. The danger of missing out. The danger of missing out. Luke chapter number 15 tonight, the Bible said in verse number 25, Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked him what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy son and, and my father hath killed the fatted cat because he hath received him safe and sound. Now look at verse number 28. And he was angry and would not go in. Did you see that? And therefore came his father up and entreated him. He he begged him. He encouraged him. He answered him. He said uh, to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgressed I at any time. He kind of stretched it there. Didn't he? he said, But you never, you never gave me a kid. And, and uh, you never let me make bad with my friend. Now look at this language. But as soon 
as this, listen, 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 as soon as this, thy son was come. You notice he didn't call him his brother. Hello? He didn't say when my brother got back home. He said about when your son come back home. You forget it. And you acted like nothing had ever happened. Can I just say this to you tonight? That father had to remind him that before that boy ever left, the Bible said the father divided unto them his living. He not only gave the prodigal half, but he also gave his other son the other half. And everything that was there at that time, it didn't belong to the prodigal. It belonged to the brother. You may not understand this tonight, but we got a heavenly Father, and the day He saved you by His good grace, He's gifted us with a lot of good things. Amen. Amen. That's right. That calf they was actually eating belonged to the brother. Hello. <laughs> That ring they put on his finger, it actually belonged to the brother. Hello? My friend, that those shoes belong to the brother. Everything there belonged to the brother. And I'm telling you tonight, everything, everything that we have tonight, it belongs to our Father. And He can give it to whoever He wants to give it to. Amen. You know, I have three grown children. My daughter here a few years back is getting ready to get married. She's wanting to figure out tell her how to pay a down payment on the house. <laughs> Brother Don, my baby, come to me and said, Daddy said, now, don't you have a big life insurance policy? <laughs> I said, yes, I do. I got a million dollars. She said, well, if I understood right, the church pays a million dollar life insurance on you. And I said, yes, that's right. And I said, if something happens to me, that insurance pays the church debt off, then your mother gets the rest of it. She looked so funny. She said, you can't get none of it now. <laughs> And I said, baby, I'll have to die. She said, well, can you get sick? <laughs> I don't want you to die. She said, I guess we'll just have to forget about that. Amen. <laughs> but do we realize tonight that everything we have tonight, it belongs to the Lord. Amen. Amen. For the car you drive, and the clothes you wear, and the strength you have, and the dollar in your pocket, and the gas in your tank, and the hammer in your tool belt, and the coon dog in the box. I'm telling you, brother, it all belongs to the Lord. Amen. 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 But you see, there's five folk here in this story you need to understand. There's the father, there's the prodigal, there's the elder brother, there's the citizen of the far country, and then there is the servants of the father. And sometimes we read all of this story. We highlight the prodigal. But we forget there's two prodigals in this story. You see, there was one prodigal spending his money with the prostitutes. There was another prodigal sitting on the pew at church on the Sabbath. There was one prodigal working every day for his father. And there's another prodigal wasting his father's substance and rises in. There was one prodigal my friend was living a life of lavishness 
There was another prodigal working, but be a little grateful and bitter. And I say this to you tonight, my friend, it's as much a sin, I, my friend, to gripe as you work as it is to be lazy and not work. Amen. I used to have a vision in my church every time I seen it. I'd say, how you doing? I hate my job. I hate my job. I hate my job. I mean, five years every time I seen him, I hate my job. I, 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 I mean, and he come to church one day and I said, what's wrong with you? He said, I got laid off my job. I said, well, you ought to be shouting. You hated it for five years. <laughs> He said, what in the world am I going to do? I said, I guess just keep driving. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Can I tell you today, my friend, there's a reason for this parable. What is the reason for the parable? My friend, you'll notice something in the story that the Bible said that the elder brother drew near to the house. Hey, listen. It's amazing to me the people that get near the glory. They come to the house of God many and they sit on the pew and they hear the preaching of God's Word and they watch Brother Robert and they watch Pastor Sneed and they watch Pastor Mark and they watch Pastor Mike and they watch Pastor Steve and they watch these men of God and they listen to these Sunday school teachers and they feel the convicting by God and they come to God's house time after time and week after week and they stand in the pew and they say, well, not today. I think that I say this to you today, why not today? Have you ever thought about that? Why not today? Think about that, Brother Tommy. Why would people not want to be right with God? Why would they not want to be right with God? Jesus was trying to tell this much. The Bible was trying to tell this much. You can be in the will of God. You can be in fellowship with the Father. Why? Why would you want to be out of the will of God when you be sitting at the table of the Lord? Amen. Listen, I've been to the hospitals and people look at me and they say, my husband's sick or my daughter's sick, a lady. Met me at the ER a few weeks ago. Months back. Brother Preacher, you know what she said? She said, Preacher, I'm glad you're here. I need you to come in the, in the ER and pray with my daughter. Said that uh, her, her uh, blood pressure is through the roof. Uh, her kidneys is shut down. It looks like she may die. I need somebody to pray. But now, are you listening to me now? I was thinking to myself, Sister Tricia, well, why ain't you in our prayer? You're a mom. Why ain't you in our prayer? She looked at me and tears streaming down her face. She said, Preacher, I'm so far away from God, my baby will be dead before I get right. She said, I'm so guilty and I'm so far from God and I live such a wicked life and I ain't been in church in years. You know that you're my pastor and said you never you never criticized us. You've always loved us. But said, I feel like I'm so far away from God that I even feel guilty about even praying for my own girl that's about to die. I'm going to tell you something. I made a lot of product for sitting on Baptist church if you live somewhere. Yeah. Sitting at the Pentecostal church, far away from God. Yeah. Sitting at the Methodist church, far away from God. Amen. I hate to know my kids at death door, and I had such a gift of conscience, I couldn't even pray with a clean conscience and believe God to touch one of them. Amen. Yeah. Amen. If that's me, I wasn't even waiting for another little piano. I'd get up out of my chair, I'd come get this altar, and I'd say, God, I feel like I'm so far away from you. I couldn't even pray for one of my own kids. I, bless God, I'd get up and dial her in. I'd slide in right now, and I'd say, God, I need some help. I, God, before, before I ask you to do anything else, I, God, I need to get everything right between me and you. I'm going to tell you why a lot of people can't pray. You know why they can't pray? Because they're mad at their brother. See, this elder brother couldn't pray. He was mad at his brother. 
I'm going to tell you, you can hold a grudge and be mad and be bitter and be jealous and it don't hurt nobody but you. I know preachers. I know preachers who get in the pulpit every Sunday and they preach with a bitter spirit. I know choir directors who preach uh, or sing with a bitter attitude. I know Sunday school teachers uh, that once had a thriving spirit and a big class. Now they got three uh, and they're bitter. Nobody wants to hear them. And they blame everybody in the world. And the problem is there's bitterness. And God, you can speak to them on a sidewalk in town. And you can tell their words are like razor blades when you speak to them. I'm going to tell you something. I go around and visit people all the time. Every day I'm somewhere distant early in the morning. Every day. I'm going to tell you, I go in a lot of times. I talk to folks. The first thing they say to me, first thing they say to me is something filled or something bitter. They're mad at the kids, they're mad at this and they're mad at that. Listen, if I was laying there, if I was laying there with cancer, I was laying there sick, I was laying there broken, I was laying there burdened, bless God. I want my heart clean. I want God to help me. I want God to heal me. And I'm telling you, you'll never be healed uh, as long as you got a bitter spirit. You can't pray for your kids uh, and your church and your pastor. And I believe there's people in churches today and the reason they're sick is they won't confess their sin uh, and they won't give up on the grudge. Uh, and the reason they have financial problems uh, is they got a bitter spirit. They're mad at God or the preacher or the deacon uh, or a sister in church. And until they get it right, they'll never be blessed. Never be blessed. I don't mean to be ugly to you, but why do you want to die and go to heaven and live in hell while you're here? Amen. Make no sense to me. My friend, there's a reason of the parable. And number two, we see the ruin of the prodigal. The Bible tells us in verse number 12 and 13, this young man thought if he left his father's house that he could live any way he wanted to do anything he wanted to, there was no results of the consequences. A young man told me a while back, Brother Mark, he said this, he said, Preacher, I'm tired of my daddy telling me what to do. I'm tired of my mom asking me what time I'm going to be home every night. I'm tired of everybody telling me when I'm going to go to work, what I'm going to do every day. I said, boy, what are you going to do? He said, I'll join the army. I said, hallelujah, son. Amen. Enjoy the trip being what you want to be and doing what you want to do. Can't you imagine we put his little bow-legged feet in them little yellow feet down there at Camp Lagoon? That little drill sergeant got about a half inch of him, cussed him about three hours, told him he's going to be his mom and his dad and his brother and his sister and his girlfriend and his nightmare for the next six months. I guarantee he would wish he'd been back home and let his daddy tell him what to do. Somebody say amen. What I... <laughs> This prodigal had a delusion. You know, there's people in life have a delusion. They think they live any way they want to and have no consequence. You know how to get back on your feet? Quit work and it's quit car payments. That's a delusion. Amen. <laughs> he thought he could do anything he wanted to do. Any way he wanted to do it. He would have a resource that would never run out. I say this to you tonight, there's a lot of God's people that have the mentality that they can do anything that they want to do and God will bless them. I'm going to say this to you tonight. Can I just tell you something kind of common? My dad's been pastoring the same church, Brother George, he's been there. Well, I got married there. I've been married 36 years. 
They've been pastoring them folks about 43 years. My old daddy's, my old daddy's 80 years old. I'll get down here. I didn't mean to get so stinky. My daddy's 80 years old. There, uh, he and Miss Joy been to church probably 30 years. They didn't do it. My brothers went look, the deacons went look, the different ones went look. Come back to church, had been speak, decided they were going to blow them by the pig out. My daddy sat there and cheered and said a word. Everybody voted back and they got done. Daddy didn't say a word. Oh, that old man of God sat there and didn't grunt, didn't grunt, just sat there and looked up. They got up. Boy, moderating me, looked at my dad and said, Pass everything to say. He said, Sure do. <laughs> this is what I'm going to tell y'all. We ain't buying no piano. I don't care what none of you say. I've been the past year 43 years. I don't care what the deacon say. I don't care what the church says. I'm the pastor of this church. You ain't prayed about it. You ain't been around all the last girl about it. I ain't gonna let the check be wrote. My wife's a treasure and she ain't gonna write it. I ain't gonna let it. And y'all go home and you get some sense, you get a hold of God, we'll talk about it later. Y'all go home, bye. He went out there mad, got his car and went to the house. They did too, they didn't like that. <laughs> tell you what happened. My old daddy went home and got to pray and got a hold of the horn to the altar. Said, God, we all children. We need a piano. Man, I've been to church for six years. Showed up my daddy's house and brought a check. You know, it's for $1,500. He said, I heard you want to buy a piano, preacher. So I, I ain't been to church in a long time. The Lord told me. And I tell you what, my daddy, he'd go back and sit back with Potter, 80 year old, he'd sit there and pray. Read his Bible and watch the man that gun smoke and the rifleman. Watch me TV and pray. Take a nap and pray. Amen. He'd peanut up butter and crackers and drink too late and drink Dr. Pepper and pray. Sit there and believe God. He went back to church on Sunday morning. Walked back up out of that church and laid eight thousand dollars across the communion table. He said, "The folk I've been praying, get the hope of God." He said, "I sit right here in the recliner, and this neighbor brought six hundred, this one brought a thousand, and that brought a hundred, this one brought fifteen, and that brought twelve, and that brought eighteen. He said, "They don't like about fifty-three dollars." And he said, "Bless God, surely, 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 between all of this bunch in this church." You can pray up enough to give me fifty-three dollars <laughs> so they can buy a piano this <laughs> You know what that old man told him? He told him, if you'll pray and get a hold of God, he said in the church, I wasn't trying to be ugly to y'all, but y'all upset me to think I've been your pastor all these years and you go talk to a banker before you talk to Jesus. You go talk to everybody in the world except the one you know can solve your problem. And the thing about it is, now as quick as that may have been, and as insultive to their flesh as it may have been, if they'd have done a tail way that little country church with about 50 or 60 people, they'd have been paying payments for the next three or four years. But they listened to a little stoop shouldered, bald headed little man of God, about five foot nine and a half inches, and got a hold of God. And they paid cash for it. You see, what I'm trying to tell you is uh, we need to remember if you got a need, you better get a hold of God. Amen. 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 I don't care who you are. There's never a time when we don't need the Lord. Who you are. Say amen. 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 This prodigal, he was in the depth of a struggle. The ruin of the prodigal, you listen. The ruin of the prodigal, the reason of the parable. Now here, now here, here we go, here we go. Listen to me, it's eight o'clock. Listen to me. 
Now I want you to look now at the remembrance of the principle. Listen to me now. The Bible said in the Word of God that that prodigal come to himself. He said, how many hired servants? My, 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 my. Verse number 17, how many hired servants of my father? They're eating steak and homemade biscuits and I'm not here drunk with the pigs. He said, I believe I'm going to go back home and say, Father, I've sinned. And I'm no more worthy to be called my son. Just make me a hired servant. Just as long as I can be in the house, just put me in the garden, I'll be satisfied. But you know, when the prodigal remembered, he remembered the goodness of the father. When the brother remembered, all he seen was self-righteousness because he said, I deserve it. I deserve it. I deserve it. I deserve it. The prodigal son said, it's the father's mercy. It's the father's goodness. The elder brother said, it's mine. It's mine. Amen. Amen. Listen. That prodigal come out and he met that father. When he met his daddy, he laid down in the middle of the road at his feet. By ceremonial law, Brother Danny, by the law, according to Leviticus, that father could have took the heel of his right foot and put it at the base of that boy's neck for the rebellion on the side son snapped that boy's neck and killed him by the articles of the law and been justified. Do you know what the father died? I'm sure you do. He didn't put that heel in his neck and break his neck. Do you notice what the scripture said? The Bible said the father fell on his neck. And kissed him. You know what that kiss meant to that boy? I'm forgiven. Listen. That boy said, Father, listen, 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 listen to me. This is an amazing thing. Sister Don about this story. That boy said, Father, forgive me. I'm not worthy. Father didn't even discuss it. Miss Bridger, the father didn't even discuss it. You know what the father said? Servants! Go get the robe and put it on. Go get the ring and put it on. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Go get the shoes and put it on. Because when he kissed him, that kiss kissed away his sin. Yeah. Forgive me while I shout. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that Thursday night when he kissed away my sin. Yeah. He used to sing an old song. I never shall forget the day when all the burden from my soul was rolled away. It made me happy, glad, and free. I'll sing and shout it for each every thing to me. Can I ask you a question tonight? In your heart, are you free? In your heart, are you free? In your heart, are you free? Or you like, I had a friend of mine had a, had a, had a curved dog. He kept him on the chain most of the time. Kept him tied to a bump rope and do it with a big pan of water tray underneath the edge of the car. That old dog got some used to being on that chain. He could go up there on Saturday when he's mowing the yard and take the chain off. 
And that dog right out there in the wood of grass that wore off and never make a step over the line. See, the Lord went to the law for you right now. Amen. He don't want you to get in a hurry. He's got you windows down. He's washing your car for his car. <laughs> How many times we as God's people, we get so used to walking in the rut and carrying the burden, being bitter, being dissatisfied. We forget what it's like. We forget what it's like to have joy. Can I ask you something all the musicians come? Do, do you remember what it was like when you got saved? Do you remember what it was like when you got saved? Do you remember the joy that was in your heart when you got saved? I was in the second grade in school when the Lord saved me. I went to school and told my second grade teacher, Jesus saved me. She wrapped me up in them arms. She's a man. She wrapped me up in them arms. Cried and squalled. Said, I'm so glad I pray for every student I have every morning. She rejoiced in the fact that Jesus had saved me. Let it rain, Lord, let it rain. Back to the matter is, can I ask you a question tonight? Do you remember when Jesus saved you? Do you remember that? Do you remember getting up from that altar and that prayer meeting to where you was and you was free? You was free. Your heart was clean. Everybody, your heart was clean. Everything was right between you and God. Do you remember that? I'm going to tell you. It can be that way again. It really can. It can be that way again. We're going to stand at our feet right now. Our pastor is coming in the front of the tent. We're going to pray. Give me a few words, Mr. Sir. Why, Mr. Lane?
Yeah. 